Lester Levinson, a great spiritual master, once said, when there are problems, if we would love more, they would disappear. When the love is complete, the problem dissolves immediately. That sounds wonderful, maybe a bit idealistic, but is it realistic after all? Maybe you've tried it. Maybe there's a problem that you've been sending love to and it's been doing nothing but get worse. So today we're gonna to examine, can love really solve problems? And if so, how can we do it successfully? That's what we're gonna take a look at today, coming up. love is your basic nature. All the love there is in the universe is right in your basic nature. And you'll discover that happiness, your happiness equates to your capacity to love. And conversely, all your misery equates to your need to be loved. Just love, 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 and you'll be so happy and healthy and prosperous. But again, you need to lift out these non-love feelings. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, the simple way to self-realization. So if you want total control of your mind and more happiness and abundance in your life, then you've come to the right place. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. You're gonna love what we show you because it is 100% experiential, meaning you get to prove it to yourself and see real world results. And if you're a regular here, you love what we do, first of all, hit the like button. Let YouTube know that this is a good thing and the rest of the world could benefit from what we're doing here. And share your experiences, share your gains in the comments below or any questions that you have. Let me know and I'll jump in and answer whatever I can. Now today, we're gonna to take a look at love. After all, you've heard it before, love is the answer. Love produces miracles. Love is the way. The problem is most of us really don't understand what love, true love, really is. That is because oftentimes we're trying to rationalize love through our mind. And our mind does not understand love. Not the real love, not the love that Lester's talking about. See, to the mind, love is a deal. Meaning, as long as you do what I want you to do, I love you. But if you don't, I hate you. Now, most of us, we wouldn't be so quick to admit that. But deep down inside, that's what's going on. Now, you see this oftentimes in relationships. Two people are having a conflict. And one's like, I'm trying to love you. I'm giving you all this love, all this attention. And you're just not responding. You're just, you're continuing to be an a-hole. No matter what I do, no matter what I give, it's just never enough. And so, you know, we try to love the other one. But when we don't see a reaction or result from our love. What happens? We get frustrated or we get insecure or we sit there and try to figure out, well, what's wrong? Why aren't they loving me? Why am I not getting what I think I should be getting? Now in psychology, they often talk about five love languages, such as, spending quality time or doing acts of service, things like that. And see, these are deals. Well, I need to do something. And by doing something, I expect to get a result from the action that I'm engaging in. And again, if we don't get the result that we're looking for, we sit there and try to figure out, well, what's wrong? Am I doing it wrong? Maybe they're speaking a different love language and I'm just not receiving it or whatever. You know, we're just in our mind trying to figure out 
why I'm not satisfied in this situation that I'm supposedly so loving in. So you see this in relationships all the time. Now, here's the thing. How you do anything is how you do everything. So taking what Lester said, if you got a problem, if you just love that problem, dial up that love, that problem would just go away. It would disappear. And so a lot of people in the releasing community, right? We got problems like we got a health problem. We got a money problem or whatever situation that's going on that we want to change. Then we try to practice love in it. And that problem just doesn't seem to change. So we're left wondering, well, what am I doing wrong? Or does this even work? Maybe Lester doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe he's a fraud, <laughs> whatever. But I just can't get those results myself. Now, every time I hear this from a graduate in our community, then I always listen where they're coming from. And usually what I hear coming out of their mouth is a lot of frustration. I'm, I'm trying to love and uh, I'm, 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 I'm just not getting anywhere. They're obviously frustrated. And see that right there, it's like the big elephant in the room because what's showing up right in front of their nose themselves is they're negative about it. I feel bad because things aren't changing. But see, that's not what love is. Now, Jesus, who went around preaching about love, he preached unconditional love. And other masters, Amma, the hugging saint out of India, she talks about selfless love and selfless service, meaning I'm going to give service. I'm going to give without any thought of receiving anything at all for the giving. And just imagine this for a moment. Take a problem in your life. Could you love that problem as it is and be totally in love with it, even if it remains forever? Could you? And be honest, check with yourself. I imagine most of you, you would want to, but along with that, there's a need for that problem to change. Take a look, see if you're looking for it to change. You're looking to get a result from that action of loving. Now let's just examine this need for the problem to change. When you want something to change, is that loving? Not really. After all, you're saying, well, I don't like you the way you are. I'll like you more if you're different. That's basically what we're saying. Whether we're saying that to our body, if we have a body problem, or we're saying that to our finances, if we have a financial problem, I'll love you more if you go along with what I think you should be doing. And how loving is that? That's not unconditional. That is, by definition, conditional. And that's what most of us end up doing. And that's why when we practice love, we hear Lester talk about love, and it sounds plausible. But why can't I do it? At least, why can't I do it consistently? After all, I think most of us, when we've practiced this from time to time, we've seen results from time to time, but sometimes it's just hit or miss. But how can we do it and get consistent results so that every single problem that rises up, we could just face it with love and see it immediately disappear, like Lester Levinson says. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to understand about love. First of all, 
Love isn't a feeling. And that's one problem that we have when we try to express it, is that oftentimes we try to emote it, right? But love, it's beyond feelings. It's a state of isness. It's just our natural state of being. So it's something that is beyond the realm of feelings and emotions, right? And that's where our mind gets confused because we have to go beyond our mind to love. And all our mind knows is about emotions and stuff. So it kind of mixes up this concept of love with the needy emotions that we have. And it distorts our perception of what love should be. The other thing about love is that, like Lester said, when I played a little bit of Lester earlier, he said, just love, 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 right? But you got to remove your non-loving feelings first. And so a lot of us, we try to love something, but at the same time, whatever it is, like that's a problem, we feel like, ugh, I hate this thing. I want it to go away. There's a lot of disapproval that's going on simultaneously towards that problem that we're loving. So while we're trying to love it, but at the same time, disapproving of it, wanting to change it, wanting it to go away, right? We don't like it. We're trying to get it out of here. That's not loving. And so it's like trying to drive a car, like step on the accelerator while your other foot is on the brake. <laughs> you're not going to go very far and you're just going to make a lot of smoke and a lot of noise and smelly fumes and so on in the process. And I think that's what most of us kind of end up experiencing when we try to love something, right? It's just a lot of effort and we just kind of feel like, ugh, at the end of it. So basically what Lester's pointing out is we got to let go of not loving at first. And once we let go of that non-love towards the problem, then loving it. It's very simple and very easy. And I'll show you what that's all about. But the other thing I want to point out is that this takes practice. Practicing love is a practice. And the reason why I say that, that it's a practice, because after all, a moment ago I said, well, it's our natural state of being. Why would you have to practice it? Well, basically, we've been practicing the opposite our whole life. We've been practicing love through the mind, through this mechanism of, you know, it's a deal, it's an exchange. And that's an ego habit that has a lot of momentum behind it. And that's why even with the, our best intentions, we can easily just get sucked back in to that ego and just be doing it all wrong without even realizing it. So I want to make something clear, right? That ego, that non-love that's been going on inside of us, it has a lot of momentum, not just this lifetime, but many lifetimes before. And so initially, like Lester points out, it takes effort to undo this effort of non-love that we've been doing this whole time. It takes a certain momentum to overcome that momentum that's already built up in the opposite direction so we can steer and change course. A lot of us would like to just flip it around immediately. But oftentimes it's like turning an oil tanker, right? It takes time. We got to pump the brakes, right? And steer and get ourselves moved around in the right direction. So it takes time. It takes practice. And that's what we're here for, right? We're here to support you. We're here to practice this together so that together as a group, 
we can all move up and join Lester in understanding the true nature of love and understanding it for ourselves, making Lester's knowledge our knowledge. So let's put this into practice now. Think about a problem you have in your life. A problem that you've been wanting to go away. A problem that you've been wanting to change. And maybe you've been trying to love it. Or maybe not. Maybe this is a whole new idea to you. All right? But like I said, everything that we do here is provable. So just follow along. Just follow the bouncing ball here and see for yourself what you discover. All right, so you got a problem in mind? Now, first of all, when you think about that problem, I just want you to put your focus right here in your stomach or chest area. You see, from the neck up, our mind is nothing more than recording and playback machine. That's all that it is. It just records things and it plays it back to you, whether you want to listen to it or not. Right? That mind's always jabbering at you, always talking at you, always telling you about this problem and that problem. In fact, that problem that you're thinking about now, that mind has probably been reminding you every single day that you have that problem. It keeps throwing it right in your face, getting you to worry about it, getting you to get on edge, get stressed out, trying to find a way to escape this problem each and every day. And so all that mind is just recording a playback machine, just playing a bunch of noise, playing that problem to you day in and day out. And from the neck up, it has no erase button. That's why it doesn't shut up. But from the neck down in your stomach or chest area, this is your feeling center. And this is where you can hit the erase button. All right, so think about that problem again right now. And focus on your stomach, your chest and see what you feel there. And if it helps you, you can close your eyes, even put your head down towards your stomach or chest so you can just bring all your attention here into this area and see what you feel. And when you think about that problem, see if you have a tightness or a contraction there, kind of a clenching feeling. Notice that? Now, your body doesn't lie. Like Shakira said, your hips don't lie. See, it's telling you that you're fighting and you're rejecting this problem and you're pushing down your feelings about it. That's why you feel so tight and contracted, clenched up right here in this feeling area. You notice that? Now, the first thing we can do, see, what that is, is you pushing down your feelings, right? Your feelings of frustration, your feelings of inadequacy, your feelings of insecurity. And of course, you don't like those feelings. After all, who does? Who wants to walk around with feelings like that all day long? So you try to manage it, keep them down there, so you can get her about during your day. Now, when you push your feelings down, you just collect them and you accumulate them more and more. That's why over time, the problem just seems to get heavier and heavier and more and more impossible. So let's do the opposite now. Instead of pushing down on those feelings and pushing down on the whole problem, what I want you to do it's focus again on your stomach or chest and exactly where it is that you feel that contraction as best as you can. Just notice where that tightness is. 
Now open up an imaginary window or door right in front of that tightness, that contraction. And just imagine that tightness as a ball of energy, just energy. And imagine that energy now going out that window or door that you just opened up. Just see that energy leave, whatever it looks like to you. There's no wrong way to do this, right? So you can see it as smoke moving out or water gushing out, whatever. Just open up that door and let that energy go. Now let it go a little bit more. And even more. And even more. And even more. And there's nothing to figure out about this energy, what it is, where did it come from, what does it mean, how did it get there. We don't need to play Dr. Phil with ourselves. Just open up. It's just energy. It's not good. It's not bad. Just open up and let it leave. That's it. And let it leave a little bit more. Now notice how you feel. Feel a difference? Just notice if you feel a little bit lighter. That's all we're looking for. It's just a lighter feeling. You feel that? And how nice is that? Right? Not so bad. Instead of feeling all gripped up and contracted, you open up the door and then the energy leaves and you feel light. You feel more spacious, more present. And how easy is that? Now, let's take a look more closely at that problem of yours. And see if you've been disapproving of it. Maybe not so blatantly, but maybe your attitude is just simply like, I want this to go away. I love it, but I don't want it here, sort of a thing. But that, yeah, but, I love it, but, that's disapproval. Because part of you doesn't love it, because it's there. Ah, I don't love it. I don't, I don't want it to be here. Now, when you're disapproving of it, what does that accomplish? Notice what goes on when you're disapproving of it. It activates your mind, and that little voice in your head is complaining. Oh, I woke up again and I oh, got the same problem. Right? And you have to listen to that. And then you sit around, try to figure out, well, what do I do about this? I try this, I try that, that doesn't work. Maybe I need to go try this other thing. Maybe I need to go stand on my head. Maybe that'll do it. Right? And no matter what you do, no matter how much you try to figure out, what to do about it, you still have the problem. So obviously your mind doesn't have an answer to that. But what is obvious, it's that big elephant in the room. You don't like the situation, right? And what are you doing? You're taking something that, well, it's arguably a pocket of negativity. And you're just dumping more negativity into it. It's like throwing a log on the fire. You see that? And who's doing that? 
who's throwing that log on the fire? Who's disapproving of the situation? You are. And so what Lester's talking about is take responsibility. You must let go of your non-loving feelings first. And then the love is just natural. It's easy. After all, it is the real you. But you're not looking at the real you. You're just looking at your mind. So, here's how you can start taking your power back. After all, it is your decision. If you're doing it, you're disapproving of it. And that isn't getting you anywhere. Now you can make a decision. I'm going to be positive and love the situation. Or I'll be negative and hate it. What do you decide? I'm assuming your intention is to love it. Really love it, no matter what. Now first, let's let go of the disapproval. Could you let go of disapproving of it? Yes or no? And could you let go of disapproving of it a little bit more? Yes or no? Now, the, if the answer is no, I, you're just, this thing is unacceptable. I really can't tolerate it being here. It's uncomfortable. It's even painful. How could I be happy or content in this moment while this is here? It must go away. Well, here is the simple fact. It is here. And like Eckhart Tolle says, right? Whatever is, is. You can't argue with what is because it is. So what you can start to do is to change your attitude about what is. And that is your decision. So if that answer is no, just remind yourself, who's the boss here? Whose decision is it? Are you going to listen to your mind? Are you going to listen to that no? Or are you going to decide, I'm going to be loving. I'm in charge. I'm the boss. And I decide to let go of disapproving of it. Could you let go of disapproving of it? Just a little bit. Not too much, just a wee bit. And could you let go disapproving of it a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of it a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of it even more? And could you let go disapproving of it even more? And a little bit more. Now, how's that feel? Again, all we're looking for is a lighter feeling. Now, could you give it a little bit of love? If you feel a little bit lighter now, let's... You know, you've taken your foot off the brake. Now let's step on the gas. Could you give it a little bit of love? Now, again, this is not a rationalization. See, a lot of times we try to rationalize love, like love in a problem. Oh, I have gratitude. Oh, you're the most wonderful problem. <laughs> you know, we try to sweet talk it. But that's not it. Again, it's just a very direct thing. And sometimes keeping it simple is the easiest way to accomplish this. Because sometimes that problem can be like a serious issue. It could be something that generates a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, serious consequences. And so... It can be difficult to wrap your mind around loving it, accepting it. So let's do this in the most simple way possible. And I'll show you how beautifully this works. Take a look at that problem. Right? Just get a picture of it in your mind. 
And now instead of getting into all these, you know, woo-woo stories in your mind and rationalizing about loving it, no, let's just be very simple and direct. Look at that picture you have in your mind about that problem. And just say yes to that picture. That's all. Y-E-S. Try it. You just say yes to it. Could you say yes to it a little bit more? Could you say yes to it a little bit more? And could you say yes to it even more? And could you say yes to it even more? Three simple letters, Y-E-S. Could you say yes to it even more? Or if you're Spanish, two simple letters, S-I. <laughs> or if you're Romanian or Russian, two simple letters, D-A. <laughs> right? Could you just say yes to it? And could you say yes to it even more? And some more. And even more. And even more. And could you say yes to it even more? And notice what you're experiencing now. Now that picture might still be there. And that problem still might be out there in your life. But notice how you feel. See if right now you feel bigger than that problem. Right? Before, the problem was up here and you're here. It's something bigger than you. Right? You didn't have an answer to it, a solution. It dominated you. But now, just by saying yes, you feel bigger. Almost in the sense that, well, the problem's still there and I can allow it to be there. So what? I'm happy anyway. Now, could you just like the problem? Now, this might seem a little strange to the mind. Do you, you want me to like that problem? Well, liking it, or in other words, love, positive, what does it hurt? What does it hurt to be positive or loving? Love doesn't hurt anything. All right, so you got nothing to lose. And it doesn't mean that you have to agree with the problem. Just love it. And again, it's just a decision. It doesn't take any sort of mental gymnastics. You can just like it a little bit. We'll start there. Could you like it a little bit? Yes or no? And could you like it a little bit more? And could you like it a little bit more? For no reason, just because. After all, what do you have to lose? The problem's there anyway. Just like it. If it gets worse, you, know, you can go back to doing what you were doing before. But try it out. Could you like it some more? And even more. And even more. Just because you can because it's your decision. Could you like it even more? And even more. And even more. And take a look at that picture now in your mind. And notice if that picture has maybe diminished, gotten softer maybe even completely disappeared. And now your mind is just blank and you're present and you're happy and nothing needs to change in order for you to be happy right now. Notice something like that? Or at the very least, just a lighter feeling. And again, what's wrong with that? 
So, look, even if nothing else changes, even if that problem never goes away, what's wrong with being positive? What's wrong with being loving? And being imperturbable now in this moment, despite what's going on. After all, it's your choice, isn't it? It's always been your choice. So these are the simple steps where we can follow and prove out everything that Lester was talking about. But like I said, it takes practice. It takes commitment. That's why in Lester Six Steps, one of those steps is to make releasing constant. He didn't put that in there just because he needed an extra step. Oh, five steps. Well, that's not enough. Let's add a sixth. He means it. And if you are really interested in where Lester's at and you want to actually get there yourself, then how are you going to do it if you don't make this goal, make this purpose, and make releasing constant? After all, what is your alternative? Sit around, listen to your mind, trying to figure a way out of problems, beating yourself up, worrying, and doing all these other negative things that your mind tells you to do. After all, if you listen to that mind closely, the way that it talks to you, it's very obvious that it is not out for your happiness. And it is not out for your freedom. It wants you to be subjugated. It wants to be in charge. It wants to boss you around. And the way it does it is to get you negative, to push you down to get you feeling insecure, to get you frustrated, to get you negative. And that's how your mind wins. That's how it stays in charge. But it's time to break out of that. And if you're ready to really break free yourself, then I invite you to join me for a new six-week course called Love Yourself and Let the World Have It Your Way. After all, we've been talking about how love is our true nature. Doesn't matter who we are, doesn't matter who out there in the world, no matter how despicable they are, inside of them, their nature's love, just like every being in the whole universe. And so deep within, everybody's looking for this love. Everyone's looking for our true nature. So when you're loving, everybody just gravitates towards you. The whole world just falls right into your lap. That's why it's called love yourself and let the world have it your way. Right? And again, you don't need to believe me, but you experienced for yourself. When you started loving, you got bigger than the whole thing. Right? So the whole world comes your way because you're the big one. So I'll put a link to it up here and also in the description below. This is a six week course that'll show you. Not only how easy it is to practice everything that Lester talks about, but also gives you the momentum to overcome your ego, overcome your mind, so that you walk away fully in charge. And no matter what your mind throws at you, you can handle it with love. So it's time to grow up and be who you really are. Again, I'll put the link up here and down below. Join us for the Love Yourself course and turn your life into a total paradise from now on.